Hi guys, welcome to Educating Shani. I'm Shani and I'm recovering from an eating disorder. Hi Shani, hi. So welcome to part one of today's Q&A video. If you want to see, oh, watermelon in my teeth. If you want to see part two of the Q, of today's, wait, what part am I doing? I did part two first this week because I did another part one and it was horrible. Um, as far as editing goes, you guys would have been so bored because I had animals fighting in my room. I had, I wasn't able to read for some reason. I was shaky. I was frustrated and it just wasn't good. So I decided to record it, re-record it. So I did part two, just barely, and now I'm going to do part one. So this is part one, I think. This is not going to be edited either, so I apologize. Anyway, welcome to part one, I think, of today's Q&A video. Um, that's all. Okay, well, let's get into your questions, shall we? Oh, something that I needed to re-record, though, I said in part one. Okay, well, what I want to say, are you listening? You have to be listening. Are you listening? Okay. You are beautiful. You are worth it. And I am too. And I'm saying that at the beginning because a lot of you are not watching until the very end of my video where I say that every single video at the end of every single video I say that and that's the, the part that you need to hear is you need to watch until the very end because sometimes there's funny stuff at the end and sometimes oh and also ugh, I really should have just used the first one and edit I can't I can't I am all over the place also I just wanted to say thank you again for those of you that have not seen my little thank you video, I'll be doing more, I'm sure, but just thank you, thank you, thank you again for all of your donations towards my teeth um, and for being so generous and so kind. And for those of you who are constantly apologizing, saying that they're so sorry you can't help me with money, that's okay. And I appreciate that you even care that much to apologize for that. Like, that's the sweetest thing. You can help me in other ways if you want to. You can share my GoFundMe page on social media and explain my story to people before you share it because a lot of them probably won't get this, my story from just the one picture I have on there. Um, so that might help. And you can, and a lot of you are asking how, uh, Claudia, I finally saw your question. I mean, I saw it before, but I keep forgetting to tell you. Claudia, curse the maker, curse the maker has been bugging me. How do we get it to you if we don't have a credit card? Because you can only do a credit card with GoFundMe. Well, I need to talk to my sister about the PayPal thing. You were wondering about that. I'm not sure how to set that up. My sister might, or I can learn how to do it tonight. I don't know. But I did think of another way is that you could mail me a check if you want or cash or whatever, um, because I'm going to be setting up my PO box this week. Also, I'll let you know for sure when it's up before you send it just to make sure. Um, so you can do that too, whatever you are the sweetest and Claudia, you were even talking about how all your friends who don't even know me want to donate and that you wanted them to donate for your birthday, for your birthday present. Like you are the sweetest person in the world and I've seen your comments and I just want you to know that I've seen them and I don't have an answer on the PayPal thing yet, but I'm working on it and just know that I'm thinking of you and I've, I've already started. Yeah, I'm getting there. So, okay. I think that's all. So let's get to your questions. And also the questions in the first one, I couldn't really find very many questions. <sighs> I don't know. I talked about how, like when I read your comments every day, cause I read them every day, I always find so many great questions that I'm like, oh, I gotta answer that on Tuesday. And then when I go to find them, I can't find them and it's really frustrating. And I could do it ahead of time, but I'm a little bit lazy, just kidding. I just don't have much energy. And so these uncut Q and A's have been really great for me, but sometimes it leaves a little awkward space for you. Like right now I'm just rambling. I don't even know what I'm saying because I'm just looking for some question marks so that I can answer some questions because the questions I did before, I kind of re-answered a bunch that I already have in the past. That's the other thing, you guys, you can keep asking me your question over and over, that's great. But if I'm still not answering it after a long time, then just know that I probably already answered it. So maybe go watch my other Q and A's. I know they're long, but if you really care that much or want to watch that much, which most of you do, which is amazing. And okay, get to a freaking question, Shannon. Shannon, I don't ever call myself Shannon. Shannon is the old Shanny. Shan Shanny is the new healthier Shan person. And Shannon is the 
That's a good one. Okay. Fran Bryan says, I don't know what I was talking about. Sorry if I cut myself off. Fran Bryan says, Shani, hi, you're so amazing. Thank you, so are you. I've had an eating disorder for as long as I can remember and I wanted to tell my boyfriend, so I did. At first, his reaction was horrible. He told me to stop and that I need and that I need help and I need to be supervised all the time and to just not do it, basically. I was so upset as I thought he was going to react like Danny, like Danny had. I thought he was going to be supportive and loving. So after a while, I remembered your, me telling your parents you have an eating disorder video. I sat him down to watch it and after he came into the room, sat me down and said that he was so sorry he wanted to help. He said he's there for me and that he loves me. I cried with happiness. I'm gonna cry too. I just wanted to say I'm so grateful for your videos, for you and your videos. Thank you. I also have a question. Can you give any advice on how to make a relationship work better with an eating disorder or how to make it easier for the other person? That just made my day. Thank you. Wow, that made my whole day. Thank you, Fran. Um, first of all, I'm proud of you for telling him and I'm proud of you for keep on trying and like bringing him back to watch that video. You guys, if people aren't hearing you, go watch that video. It's very helpful. I explained to them really what an eating disorder is and what it does to you because it's a horrible disease and people don't know that. Um, so what can you do to make it work better? Well, for me and Danny, it has been, I've been very blessed. I'm not gonna, I'm not trying to brag. I just have been blessed with an angel of a husband who has patience for me endlessly, like endlessly. I don't think he's ever called me a bad name. I don't think he's ever insulted me. I don't think he's ever done, even if we're in like the worst fight of our lives and I'm calling him an asshole, he has never ever said anything degrading to me in any way. He's just one of those people that's just very special. Like he's very a special man. But besides that, he also is a human being and he gets very frustrated. Now, what he'll do when he's frustrated is he'll leave. He'll go for a walk, he'll go work in his shop and work on, do something physical um, and breathe and calm down and come back to me. But the other thing recently, he's been, um, that unlimited patience of his is starting to wear a little thin recently just because it's not, I mean, there are a lot of reasons, a lot of stressful reasons in our lives right now, but I've noticed and both of us have agreed on like kind of compromising. I mean, every relationship, no matter what you're going through, needs compromise in order to work. And so for me, it's it's almost like he was so kind before and so patient and so loving no matter what before that I always thought, oh, well, I'm just lucky. And so I don't really have to try. I'll just let him be the good one in the relationship and our relationship will be great. But recently, since he's been losing his patience, which in, I'm secretly glad for because it's forced me to freaking grow up and be a woman and compromise with him the way that he has done for me my entire life. So now, you know, I, I feel like it used to be like I was 50% and he was 100% and now I feel like we're 100-100. And that took, um, for us, that took a lot of sacrifice of other relationships in our lives. A lot of friendships have been had to be sacrificed and family members and um, focusing together and being together and why we love each other and how we love each other and things like that. But then also compromising on trying to beat our, both of our, whatever both of our um, temptations are. Like Danny has his temptations too and I have mine, mine are my eating disorder. Doesn't matter what Danny's are, we don't need to talk about that, but we both have it, we've both been through that and so we really try and use the same method that I use with you guys, which is to be very loving, very supportive, and very realistic about the situation because every person on this earth fails. Every person messes up. Every person falls down. It's just about whether or not you decide to be strong enough to get up and try again. And that's that's the secret, not just personally, but in a relationship as well. Um, I should tell you guys, I think I've mentioned this once before, I think. Danny and I separated um, a year after we were married. We separated because 
it's not important why, but it did have to do with his temptations. That's all I'll say, I guess. I don't know. That's a dumb way of saying it. That's not what it was. I don't know, but it, it, that's not important. The point is, is that we separated and back then I had not learned yet. I had not learned how to work together in a relationship to get through things. Unfortunately, I grew up seeing my parents get divorced and a lot of people go through that. 50% of people go through that. Um, and so in my mind, I thought that if he did something bad that wasn't like, I mean, he wasn't like beating me or anything. Don't let, don't go crazy in the comments. He was fine. It was just a mistake that he made. That's all I'll say. And, but in my stupid mind back, not stupid, just not learned, not learned, not learnedness mind of mine. I was 20 years old. Um, I kicked him out of my house and I was getting ready to divorce him because of a mistake that he made. And because that's what I was taught, but I didn't realize until after he did move out and we did separate and I started talking more and more to my mom and, and I kind of was talking to her about her divorce and I learned what I already knew, but I realized as an adult that their divorce was more complicated. There were a lot more horrible, abusive things going on in my parents' marriage that made them, that made it safe for them to divorce, that made it, that it was a good thing that they divorced. But for me and Danny, there was so much room to work on it. There was there was nothing where I was in danger or he was in danger or anything like that. He just was a human being who made a human being mistake that yeah, it was a bad mistake, but it was, it was like I learned and it's the most valuable lesson that I will, that I've probably ever learned is that you can get hard through hard things together. And if one of those things is your eating disorder, I guarantee you I've been there, I've lived through it, I've lived through getting other, through other hard things with my husband. And that's why we are so strong today. We ended up getting back together, I don't know, maybe six months after we separated. Um, we still saw each other every day, by the way, while we were separating, we still, we would get together and we would say prayers together at night on the phone. And like, we still talked every day because we just were also best friends. And so it's hard to let go of that. But the thing that made me go back and keep trying is because, I don't know, I guess I just felt that he was worth it. He was worth it. I know he was worth it and he's still worth it. And the kindness that he's shown me, oh, I'm gonna get emotional, has been just um, really special and really amazing. So we kind of, secretly not secretly we kind of joke about it but it's kind of true that there was a time where Danny needed me and I was there for him I took him back and then I was there for him after I learned my lesson and now we're at a place where I need him and he's been there for me um and maybe that's why I don't know but I'm telling you compromise and realizing that we're all human beings is what can get you through everything anything any hard time, unless it's like abuse. I don't put up with that. If he ever beat me or hurt me or raped me or anything like that, no, he would be out the door. I don't put up with that. But if it's like a human mistake that we've all made, then good heavens, there's room for forgiveness. It can happen. What was the question even? I don't know. Let's move on. Well, that's a fun story time for you. You're welcome. Okay, I wonder what, uh, I talk so much. And I need some watermelon. You'll find out in part two of today's Q&A why I'm eating watermelon. I mean, why wouldn't I? It's delicious. But specifically, why it's helping my eating disorder. In part two. Barely soft enough that I can gnaw on it with my gums up here because I have no teeth over here. On this side, it gets zinged with coldness, so it's really difficult to eat it, but it makes me feel good, and you'll find out why. Mm. This is not a question, but I've been dying to point this person out. Um, Renee Blakesley. Renee Blakesley. Um, she said, I love that you did this. Random videos are just as good as edited and planned ones. Great encouragement, love you. I love you too, and 
I don't know if you've left me any questions. I'm sure you have, but that just reminded me that I've been meaning to give you a little shout out and just say thank you because you're wonderful and you always leave really encouraging comments and you're very consistent and you're very loving and kind. So thank you. Thank you for everything you do for me. That's all. You're beautiful. Uh, oh, oh, sweetie. Good heavens, dear. I think I've talked about this guy before. Suicidal David Todd says, I feel like I can't do life anymore. Point is, Shani, can you help me please? And also I have a question. Why do, why do I have puffy cheeks after purging? And please note that I'm not trying to stop but I can't. That's why I want you to help me somehow. Maybe just by being happy and keep on doing your YouTube videos, that keeps me distracted in a, and in a good mood. Oh, I love that. David, is your name David or Todd? Probably Todd's your last, I don't know. Anyway, um, you're beautiful and you're worth it too and you can get through this. Like, you really can. I know you can, you have already. You've been with me for a long time and the fact that you're still here and still leaving comments, what does that say about you? You're still here, you did it somehow. That means you can keep going. And again, you're never gonna be perfect. And if you have to rely on my videos to keep you from killing yourself, then do it. That's why I do my videos to keep me from killing myself. So yeah, keep on watching. I've been getting a lot of comments like that though where people will be like, can you do really, really long videos because they literally get me through my entire day and they, the longer the better because my thoughts start to... So I don't know, what if I started, like, I don't know, what would I do for that? What if I like dedicated one day to just like an hour or two of questions? Cause I could do that. I don't mind doing that at all. I love the long ones too, but I'm also trying to build my subscriber list and people don't like long videos usually. However, in the eating disorder um, community, I feel like we kind of do like the longer ones because we do, we depend on other people to get us through the day. That's how I am with my favorite YouTubers. I would love if they did longer ones every day or whatever. I don't know. Does anyone have any thoughts on this? Hmm. I'm not going to get into that. Okay. Megs Klein, 77. Great video. I want to make a YouTube channel, but I'm too nervous. LOL. Do it. I was nervous too. Look what it did for me. I want as many of you out there to do eating disorder YouTube videos if you feel like doing it. Like we need to get this community building and spreading we need to get it so big that people are going to start searching for specifically for eating disorder videos on how to help yourself to get better like i want that to be popular i want it to be popular to try and beat your problems instead of engulf yourself in them wait is that a word engulf engulf <sighs> Okay. Mm. Okay. Haley Taylor. Question. Okay. Shani, I love you. I love you too. And you inspire me and I'm rooting for you. You're so strong. Okay. So this might be a stupid question. It also may be triggering. So I'm sorry, and you do not have to answer if it is, but I've gotten to the point where every time I eat, it physically feels like a binge, even though it totally is not. Do you have any idea how I can fix or change this? Thank you. Yeah, I used to be there. That was a big problem for me back in like high school, my high school days. So like early 2000s or late night, when was I in high school? Oh my gosh, I'm so old. Anyway. Um, I went through that too, where there would be periods where I would try to stop binging and purging, but then even if I ate like one cracker or something, I would, I would naturally throw it up. Like it just would come up or I would just 
felt full or whatever. Like I've been there too and that's and one more reason that eating disorders are so freaking difficult is because of that reason right there. Um, because it's hard to stay away from the thing that we're addicted to. How can you stay away from something that you need to live? So it's really difficult, but it's doable. I'm trying to think really quickly what I did to get over that or what I do now. Um, oh, I do have a good tip. For me, uh, it's, it's helpful for me to eat if it's something that I feel like might make me feel full, but that I know I want to keep down, then I'll eat it right before I go to bed, which normally they say is not healthy for you. Like, like, I don't know. I don't even know if that's true, but whatever. They say it's not healthy to eat right before you go to bed. But for me, within my eating disorder, I find that that's the only time that I can keep it down for sure because I can go to sleep instead of feeling full after eating it. You know what I mean? And it sucks for that little bit of right when I'm full and until I fall asleep, that part sucks. But once I do, in the morning, it feels like it's kind of worked its way through a little bit at least and I feel a little bit better and I know that I kept the nutrients down. So maybe try that as a start to kind of train your body keeping food down. Okay, let's do one more and then we're done. You guys are so nice about my singing video. You're adorable, thank you. Mm. Hi, Danielle, Kately. You're another one that always comments and you're awesome, I love you. Okay, let's find a really good one to end on. This is my fight song. Take back my life song. Which video did I put that in? I might have already talked about this in part two, but a lot of you are asking me to sing that video or that song, and I'm not sure it fits my voice, but I could do it in a Shani voice. I could do it with my voice. If you want me to, is that something you want me to do? Because I love that song. I just don't know if I can pull it off, but. <laughs> Miss Quiet Girl. <gasps> was that the first one? Okay, I don't remember which one it was, but I recommended that you guys go and subscribe to Miss Quiet Girl, and I'll put the information in the description below. If it is this one, then I already did. I don't know. I might say that again in part two. Sorry if I do. But anyway, she's adorable. She, she wears a mask on her face, so you can't really see her, but she talks to you and... I forget. I don't remember if she's going to show her face eventually. I don't know, but she talks about all of her mental disorders that she's going through and she's the sweetest, sweetest girl ever. So anyway, Miss Quiet Girl says, hey Shani, hi. What do you and Danny do for a date night? As a person recovering from an eating disorder, it's hard to find things to do with my boyfriend sometimes that doesn't involve food, like going to a restaurant or getting takeaways. Because takeaways, are you American? What is that, is that takeout? Who says takeaways? Is that Canadian? Is that, where, where are you from? Or is that an American saying and I just don't know? Anyway, because as you know, food can really mess with your mind sometimes and I don't want that on our date nights. Yeah, Danny and I have unique dates because we, we maybe go to a movie like once a year, maybe like on his birthday or on my birthday. But our dates are usually actually in the morning um, because I'm usually up all night and he gets up really early and so I'll just wait for him to wake up and then we'll watch a movie together in bed and then I'll fall asleep. So food, again, usually isn't as big of an issue because we can get takeout from the night before or or I can eat popcorn or, you know, safe foods for me or whatever with him and spend that time with him and talk to him and watch a movie with him and then I go to sleep. Um, so for us, we call it movie mornings. We do it all the time. Whenever he doesn't have to work super early, we'll do those. And that's kind of our dates. I don't... And that's weird, but we've just kind of had to, for now, we have had to make it fit our situation. But someday, if I freaking get better and freaking get out of this stupid um, night owl thing that I've had since I was a baby. Should I 
do one more or just end it? I'll do one more. You can fast forward anytime. If it's ever too long for you, you don't even have to watch. What should I sing? Have I sung in this video yet? I don't remember. There's so many questions. This is my fight song. Prove up, run, prove up, take back. Wait, which one's me? Take back my life song. Prove I'm all right, song. <clears throat> you shouldn't sing with watermelon in your throat. It doesn't work. Well. Okay, well, I'm not finding any more. I hate this. This is so awkward and long for you. Seriously, did I already ask this in this video or was it the other one? <sighs> Do you guys want me to still be doing these long ones? Is it awkward for you to watch me looking for questions and vamping until I find one? Is that what that means? It was on friends, but I don't know if that's actually what it means. You'll vamp? If you know the episode, tell me in the description below. Or not the description, the comment. Yeah, maybe I should end this. My brain is just fried today. I'm having a really interesting day. <laughs> I have no questions anywhere, guys. Where's the wall? Where are the questions? I just can't find any. I don't know. Hmm. That is a good question from Danielle, who I just gave a shout out to. Hi, Danny. I love you. I thought of a question recently. This is Danielle Kately. I thought of a question recently. Does seeing food on someone's social media trigger you or is there any kind of pictures on social media that tends to or could trigger you i'd feel terrible if i unintentionally did so still sharing your gofundme page thank you for that danny thank you um well um i have a really good friend well she was a good friend in high school i, I, I mean breathe move on i have this really good friend from high school who used to do a thing on Instagram, like a, like a healthy, um, like she works at a gym. She's very healthy. She would post pictures of her food every day, what she ate and the nutrients that were in it and all that kind of stuff. And I remember I'd always look at it and think to myself, if, if only I ate like that, if I ate exactly what she ate, then maybe I would look like her. Like that's how my thinking used to be. And then recently I went back to Instagram and looked at those same pictures after my mind has changed, my brain is getting better. And I actually look at it as, wow, that has a buttload of protein in it. And wow, that actually has a lot of fiber that could help me. That has a lot of vitamin C, which I need. That is full of iron, which is what I need to not be anemic. Like my thinking is changing. It used to be maybe if I eat healthy like that, then I'll look like her and I'll be skinny and fit and perfect in my mind. Um, but now it's like I'm looking at the health aspect, the health benefits of it. And so I guess it used to trigger me because I would equate the, equate, equalize the food with the person that posted it and think to myself, I should eat that to look like them. But now things are changing for me. So that's really great. Was there another question? Are there any kind of pictures that that do trigger me on social media? Mm. Lots of them, but I'm trying to think specific. Mm. I do know. Okay. The things that trigger trigger me on social media are when people complain about their body. Um, and that's a trigger for me in real life too. Like if people complain about their body in front of me, and I've talked about this so many times, but I'll try and relate it to social media. If I see a picture on Facebook or wherever, and somebody is complaining about their body or they give a before and after picture, like if they're on a health 
journey or weight loss journey or whatever, doesn't matter in my mind if it's healthy or not. All I see is before and after. And so if it's a picture where they're complaining about how they were before or how they felt fat before or that they were fat before or whatever, and then the after picture, or if it's just a photo where they're dogging on themselves and it has nothing to do with their weight loss journey, just anything where it's made clear that that is not attractive to them, that they don't like their body in that picture, whatever, in any form. That triggers me because I see myself, I'm getting better, but I've always seen myself as uglier and fatter than everybody in the world. And so if you think that you're fat, then what am I? Like, and I'll see pictures and I'll, and especially if they put like weight, like their actual weight, like numbers or whatever, I'll look at their before number and their before number is less than I weigh now, then I'm like, uh, okay, you know what I mean? So like that kind of stuff triggers me. Um, I mean, I'm getting better at it. I'm really getting better at talking myself out of those thoughts. It's taken a lot of practice, but yeah, those are the things that I, that, that's what came to mind first of all. So, okay, I've tortured you long enough. Thank you for watching. You guys, oh, this is so long today because if you want to go watch part two, it was just as long and you're welcome. So I'm sorry. I'll try and do better next week. I don't know. Okay, so um, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Please do and please get your friends and family to subscribe. It would mean more to me than you know. It would even help towards my teeth fund because the more subscribers I have, the more money I'll make and there's all kinds of other things and I want to spread my message as far as possible. <laughs> and give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. And I'm sorry if it's too long. Again, tell me in the comments. Please tell me, please, please, please. Just be honest, tell me. Tell me, tell me, tell me what you want to see from me. So, okay, I love you guys, and I will see you tomorrow for a really good video. It's going to be really good tomorrow, and it won't be long. Don't worry. Um, yeah, so, okay, so I love you guys. You are beautiful. You are worth it, and I am too. Thank you for watching.